have yet another update when it comes to two cruise ship passengers that were denied boarding on board the world's largest cruise ship, Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas. As many of you know, we had the mother of one of the passengers that has been very outspoken on TikTok. However, this story has been by far the most confusing thing I have heard in my entire life. And a big question that was being asked and I thought was justified, they were saying, why is the mother telling the story about this situation when her son and his girlfriend went through it? Can we hear straight from the seahorse's mouth? Well, now in part three, we are finally getting that. I have a very long video that I want to show all of you, so I'm not going to babble on too much, but just to give you guys a little context and catch everybody up to speed, we have these two passengers, a son and his girlfriend, at the age of 21 years old, we decided to go to Port Canaveral, Florida to go on Wonder of the Seas. However, when they got there, they were denied and they also lost their bag and they were confused because they didn't get any answer from their travel agent. They didn't get any answer from Royal Caribbean and it's just been a giant mess. But we are going to go get to the video, of course. If you guys want to see my previous two installments of this particular topic, I will pin it in the comment section below. Well, the kids are here and I had them kind of recap their whole story of what happened in the port for me um, so I can hear it again face to face instead of just by phone. And um, I recorded part of it. I didn't record the whole thing. It's very long, um, but I recorded the most important parts and I will edit them down and you can hear the story from them yourselves. And it's not like it's coming secondhand and it's pretty much matches what I said. I, there might be a couple of very, very small differences, but they actually added more detail than they did when they talked to me on the phone, but they weren't camera ready. So <laughs> I only have them recording like from here down. So you'll see like here down to the floor down like their feet maybe you'll see like here <laughs> but I said hey do you mind if I record and and she was like what because <laughs> it was first thing in the morning so I said well I just won't show your face they're like okay that's fine here you go break down the facts no. of what happened what was said who you called because I know you guys have called already mm -hmm. you know multiple times. multiple times so it's not me trying to come in and like let me take over. That's not the case. I'm trying to just help you guys get the resolution that you need to get. I was like, hey, what's going on? Why are we coming over here? She's like, oh, you just have to talk to them. and They got to figure out your booking. Okay, that sounds simple. And that's, here's your booking number written on this paper. Contact your travel agent. And it's probably something with your travel agent. So then we're like, oh, okay. Well, someone with our travel agent, she'll get it all figured out because everything should be good through her because all we did pay for her was just the cruise. And I even like opened my my Wells Fargo and went to go check, and I was like, oh no, nope, it's green. It went through. It checked like checked out. Like nothing is pending or anything. And so we thought we we're good. Mm. The guest services manager approached us and said, we checked your booking. The actual cruise itself is paid for. You're good to go. So then at that point we're like, oh, we're good. He he confirmed it's good. Like I thought it was that that was the issue. We're good to go. So now what's the issue? Why are we still waiting? So we're like, wait. Well then, why weren't we able to sell so we can know like what's going on? Well, you need to contact cruises.com and then they need to call us and then we can release it to you. And I was like, what? A lot of people book through outside agencies or, you know, like third parties and stuff like that because they see want, the deals. I don't want anybody else to go through what we do. That's, that was very nightmarish. Like, really, that was terrible. The entire time we got that, like, the travel agent was going to fix it. Like, she was like, oh, yeah, no, no, it's this, it's that. She was on the phone with us the entire time. It was the same lady that never transferred to anybody else. And she made sure, even when he told us no, she was the one who personally called us back after an hour. So I'm like, the whole time we're like, okay, she said it was a glitch issue. Okay, she said it was an accounting issue. Okay, now it's, we're gonna go check your financials. And then now it's, yeah, sorry, you guys can't sell. We can't tell you why. You can contact this number and they'll let you know. Like, wait, what? Then it's like, I wanna know too. So it's like, if, like, I wanted to, were we able to fix the issue? Like, was it that serious that you canceled the entire thing? So whenever you talk to the cruises.com agent, and she was working through all the issues and she mm -hmm. said she was going to call corporate. Mm -hmm. She came back and said, they're not going to let you sail, but. But we will give you a credit for another cruise. And we were like, if we can't sell right now, why would we want to sell again with them? Like, that doesn't even make sense. Right. Because we were like, because we're thinking that it's something serious maybe. So we're like, oh, okay, well, if it's something serious, they're not, that's why we can't do it. But if you're offering us another one, then clearly it's not something that's serious. Right. That's the way I look at it. If it they're like, offering you another cruise, then it's not a security issue, mm -hmm. you know, because so many people were like, you know, if there's something in their background, if they're if they did a background check and you didn't pass that. But at the same respect, if one person didn't pass the background check, that doesn't stop both of you from cruising. Yeah. You know, they would have let they would have said so and so can't get on, but mm -hmm. you can get on. You know, they say you guys can, are not selling today. Right. Like you could have sent us an email and been like, hey, there's a chargeback to make sure that you, you, you guys can still board if you're all good, add a new car or pay there. 
We didn't get any pictures of complete shot surprise. So I'm like, that's crazy. Like that's, I don't know, I feel like that's very unprofessional, especially for such a big cruise ship. This has happened with Carnival before with my car, because like I said, it's an Amex. And it was, they took it as fraud, but Carnival just dropped it. Like they just took the drink passes off. And then so when I go check before I'm gonna go on the cruise, I'm like, hey, where are my drink passes? Then I contact them and they're like, oh yeah, so we tried your card and didn't go through. Would you like to try again? Just re-add the card, boom, it's back on. It wasn't, you get there and you can't get on. We're like, we well, can pay for it. Did it come back or anything? And she was like, your booking is okay. I don't know what he's talking about. She was like, everything is okay. Um, she was like, everything on there, like on the cruise.com part, everything on your Royal says it's all good. So she she didn't understand why. And then well, that's when she contacted them and she said something about a drink pass chargeback. That's why they didn't want to. Then she said it was that one charge for a drink pass chargeback. So, and you offered to pay for it? Yeah, cash and card. And I was like, I have all the verification I need. If, if it, the issue was the American Express, I have my card right here, I have my ID, I even have my passport. Like, I have multiple forms of verification. Yeah. Like, nope. Okay. He said, well, I can pay cash. I can pay cash. Like, it's an issue if you think it's like fraud or something or something wrong with the, the form of payment. Nope. They just said, nope. The thing is, that wasn't even shared with us from him directly. It was just from her. Like, they were being very discreet. And it's like, if it's our account on what's going on with our stuff, why can't you just tell us? Like, it really made me think it was something bigger. And I'm like, what could it have been, literally? Because we've never sailed with them before, so I didn't understand. Right. But they thought you had sailed with them before. Yeah, they're like, because he was trying to, he was telling us that, like, trying to tell me that, yes, we have. And I was like, no, we've never sailed. We literally, were like, we sailed with other cruise lines, but we have not sailed with you guys. He said, are you sure? I was like, yeah, we're sure. We've never been on the Royal Caribbean. What do you mean? And he's like, okay, well, it's, I don't know. They're saying something like you sailed before. It's kind of like what they said. And I was like, again, we have not sailed this cruise line before. I didn't even say Carnival or nothing. I said, we both I've never taken Royal, but we're taking Carnival. Mm -hmm. So, so that makes me wonder if it's an issue with somebody that had the same name that, that's what we on a previous, like a do not sail list. Yeah. People have mentioned that they do have like do not sail lists where they people are, get on those lists and you can't sail because you've had past problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that makes it sound like maybe that could be an issue. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. His name is a little common, but my name is very unique. Like, His name is extremely common. I don't know. At this point, we're just over it because we, throughout the week, we've called him several times just to be met with Cruises tells us one thing, Royals says no. And the only time you got that like actual verification was we was on three way, and they're like, "Well, no, she said you should have got this much as a refund after your cancellation fees." Mm -hmm. I was right there when she said we're going, we're processing a full refund. Because she kept asking us over like, "You sure you don't want to just book another cruise? Like we can get you another booking?" And he was like, "No, I want my money back. Like I don't, I don't want to get on the cruise anymore." He was like, "This ruined my experience. This was my first experience with the Royal. I do not want to cruise with them anymore." And that was when you guys at the port, or mm -hmm. okay. That's when we were leaving the port because, like, I don't know. I'm not going to say she was fighting for it, but she was, like, trying to be like, hey, well, we can still give you this. Like, like still get on. Like, they don't want to give us that money back because, you know, it's $4,000. Right. When they told you you had to leave, they, like, physically walked you out? Yeah. I don't remember her name. She was almost Latina. This, and she was walking us out, and I kept stopping because I wanted to turn around and talk to the people at the, the guests at uh, the service because they were the ones who were telling me, we're going to get your luggage. They're not going to leave without your luggage. But then she's like, okay, um, the, ter the terminal is not closed. You guys have to go out front. And I'm like, wait, what about my luggage? And she was like, they're still looking for it. And I was like, okay, so but once I get outside, who am I going to be able to talk to? And she was like, they're going to bring it to the front. A lot of yeah. people thought that there was no guest services desk at the terminal. They said it was only on the boat. Well, his official title was guest services manager. But where we stood, it was like, it said Royal Caribbean coordinate, coordinator. There was um, two other people who were left got left off the boat it was a, a, a asian couple and then one single lady and she almost looked like she's like hindu and she, she they escorted all of us out to the front we travel so much we want to know like so we don't run into this issue again like there's i was like we're not being taken there's nothing to lie about like we just want our money back at the end of the day we're exhausted with the entire situation right we just want our money back right that was the cruise .com. okay she said that she she said that she put in a full refund and that was the first time we called about trying to figure out why um we weren't able to go and then when we called back it was because of that little two hundred fifty dollars, and we're like, yeah, absolutely not. And she's like, oh yeah, no, we put in the full refund. Like, Won't be booking through them again either, <laughs> for sure. And I think that's why they were trying to give us uh, another cruise because they probably knew that they weren't going to refund us. I mean, why were you so quick to offer us another cruise? But okay, well, I think we have a good amount to go with, and we can call and see what the status is. Sound like an inter sounds like a professional interviewer. No, but that's the question she needs to ask. But that's what I need to know. I need to know this. I need to know what happened. I need to hear your side of, of the details, even though we've talked about it, mm -hmm. but it needs to be said. People are just chatting. Like I said, I it's not even just for us. I wouldn't want anybody else to go through that. Exactly. Like they should know. So moving forward, like, 
if you have to go through all these ropes, if you book to a third party, make sure your stuff is good. Right. Before. <laughs> right. And, and a lot of people, you know, a lot of people on um, the posts, they're concerned because they booked through an outside agency or whatever. And I keep trying to reassure them that, you know, it's probably just a one off situation. But yeah. at the end of the day, we want to find out what that situation is so that other people don't go through this. Yeah. And, and be left out and confused, mm -hmm. you they know? They need to understand the process. Like, they don't, they're thinking that we're just saying stuff. No, they're literally not giving us a reason. That people have their own way of expressing themselves. And, like, but you gotta look at me. I have long nails, long hair. Like, I am a goody two-shoes. I just don't look like I am. So, <laughs> like, see if you interact with the other people there, because they were all older with that problem. There was this older uh, African-American, and they gave him the same orange slip that they gave us. And he was like, he tried to call him. He was like, Hey, um, my travel agent, they're not even open anymore right now. And before we got, like, before we got escorted out, he was able to go on the boat. I just saw how he interacted with everyone else versus us. And he just, I don't know, he was, like, very standoffish with us versus everybody else. He was very willing to help. No direct answer. Literally. And I, that's what I said. Everybody else was saying, yeah, I speak more to the story. That's ridiculous. That's what we thought. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, what tell us? Like, there is more to the story, lie, but let us know. can you tell us what it is? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest with all of you, I still have no idea what the hell is going on. I am confused. You would think after a 10 minute video and actually hearing from the sun and this being the third installment of this particular topic that we'd all have a little bit more clarity. But no, it seems that when it comes to this situation, I feel like personally some things, they gotta be getting omitted, right? I'm not saying that anybody's lying here. I'm just saying there has to be some information that is being left out. We got the clarification stating that for the son and his girlfriend, yes, they are 20 one so that's not the factor right they can book the cruise and sail with one another and have a harmonious time well they didn't they got denied but either way that's not a factor what is a factor is they're saying that it was their first time sailing with royal caribbean and they went through cruises.com so it seems like cruises.com the travel agent the credit card the mx gold card whatever mx card american express card they use and royal caribbean this is all a giant conundrum it's a giant concoction of of problems and issues that really it seems like nobody can seem to figure out unless of course some details are being left out let's look at some hard facts here we got to get serious about this because i really want to figure this out it's very confusing however i do believe that if we all put our beautiful minds together we can do something here and come to a legitimate and valid conclusion the sun is saying it was their first time sailing with royal caribbean yes who were they sailing with before? Were they sailing with Carnival? Were they very important fun people? Were they latitude people? Lats? Let's see, NCL. I, don't, I haven't thought of a good term for them. I don't think NCL has either. But nevertheless, they were sailing with one line. And then it seems like they were trying another line, which we know that people don't do that. Everybody's loyal to that line that they stick with. So something had to have gone on with whatever line they were previously loyal to that made them change their alliance, their, their allegiance, their loyalty. They bend the knee to another line, will try to switch over to Royal, and they were denied. Could it potentially be a mythical creature that we've all heard of that really, it hasn't been put publicly out to be in existence? Of course, I'm talking about the universal no-sale list. There have been agencies and people within the cruise ship industry that say that it does exist. I personally believe it does exist, considering what I've known and working in the cruise ship industry as well. It's just not put out there like that. Nevertheless, I do believe that there is the potential that something could have gone on with the other cruise line and maybe this mysterious situation with the MX card, this uh, maybe some credit card. I, won't, I don't want to say fraud, but maybe we have a history of chargebacks in which somebody may call and file a dispute after purchasing something and then maybe the cruise lines are like look we got to flag this person because maybe it's too much of a recurring thing i'm not saying that that's what happened however things are looking towards that direction because personally for me i couldn't think of any other reason as to why somebody would be denied boarding at least not in this way shape or fashion if it actually did go down in the way that they said it went down by the way, before we continue and start to kind of wrap up this particular video, I know it's been a long one, I apologize, but as you know, we had a lot to cover for today's video. But I do want to point out something that I think is important for all of you to remember. Many of you that watch my channel know that I don't try to advertise and promote myself as some all-knowing cruise god. I speak with confidence because I'm not afraid to admit that I'm wrong, and well, this is just how it is. If I talk with a low tone and, and unconfident, you wouldn't care about anything that I have to say, but that does not mean I consider myself like in travel 
expert. I believe that there is really no such thing as a travel expert because even a travel expert can go somewhere and I promise you, whether it be a flight or a cruise, there is a potential and likelihood that something somewhere at some point is going to happen. Nevertheless, this is definitely a learning experience. This topic has been entertaining, it's been valuable and well, chock full of cruise lessons. For starters, there have been people that have chimed in on cruises.com. Some people are saying like a wholesaler of cruises or whatever and that's why they're able to offer it a, a discount for a lot of people and it seems very tempting, very enticing for people to go at cruises.com. I have told you guys before and not, well not telling you guys, I've advised you guys before that when it comes to a travel agent, they are extremely useful, they are extremely helpful. However, you should go to somebody that is reputable. Maybe you've been referred to your travel agent by a friend, maybe you already know of them and you know of their relationship with a particular cruise line that you want to sail with. That should be the reasons that you should go work with a travel agent. Don't just find some fly-by-night travel agency on Google that is offering the deal that you want to go on your cruise for a fraction of the price because, well, you do run the potential of going through some problems. I'm not saying it is a situation where the travel agent could have maybe put in the name wrong and there may be a mix-up of the names of somebody that had already sailed previously or Royal Caribbean that is on the no-sale list. There is the potential because we're dealing with tech and when you have technology these days, there is the potential for things to kind of get mixed up and go wrong and glitch and all this other stuff. However, just also make sure you're going through the proper channel should there be a situation where you are overcharged or you want to do a chargeback or file a dispute make sure you contact that other party let's say in this case royal caribbean when you are calling your bank to file the dispute that way when you talk to your bank you can say hey i've talked to them maybe record that call and get confirmation like i've talked to them they're not helping me with this situation i gotta file a dispute and whatever the case may be that way both parties understand that hey I went through the proper channels. You guys have to as well, regardless of what situation is going on. Anywho, unless something juicy comes out, I don't know if I'm going to do a part four on this one. That might be a little excessive, unless, of course, this video does well. I know somebody's going to point out, you're just doing it for the views. Yes. Yes, I admit it. I want people to watch my YouTube videos that I make public for everybody to see. The fact that people are watching videos to me is just kind of like an indication that you want me to make more of those videos, by the way. If you guys don't like a specific topic, I do advise all of you to just not click on it. Don't click on it, don't comment on it, don't engage with the video because it tells YouTube to promote it to more people, it gives me money, it's paying me because you guys are watching it, and it's also by the numbers and the views and the data that's collected, it's telling me to continue making more videos on that specific topic. Just so you guys know, food for thought, kind of peel, the, peel back the curtain a little bit and you guys understand what goes on here on YouTube. But anyway, of course, guys, hit that like button on your way out, subscribe if you haven't already, know that I love each and every one of you, and I'll see you later. I'm sorry for talking so much. Take it easy.